It's a good time to come in. You know what? Hey, why did why did Jim Irsay rush it? Hey, you got the Raiders on the schedule. Why not? And I don't know how much you want. I don't know how much you want to talk about them. But man, I go for Josh it. McDaniels. Josh McDaniels. Look, it's I, I, I thought of this the other day. I thought of this the other day. When the players like Devontae Adams said it and Derek Carr said it too, he said, Oh, I love my coaches. But then they start tripping, they start talking about all this other stuff. They said, No, no. This ain't about my coaches. I love my coaches. And I think both you said both things can be true. <laughs> Here it is. I think they love their coaches. I don't think they love their coaching. <laughs> And that's what they say. We uh, we love them as individuals. We don't love what they're giving us. And it's like I love so all God. I love all is, God's children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those. There's right. so much. Anytime, anytime your starting quarterback is up there pausing and crying, talking about things that are going on, and you know how how pissed off he is, and it seems like it's being dramatic. But and, and I'm not criticizing the reporters. I know it's tough in the moment. Seems like he's being dramatic, but he's not really saying anything. He's emoting, but he ain't saying nothing. Then that reflects on the head coach. Bill Belichick said a long time ago, and he told me, he said, look, when you're the head coach, every everything is brought to your desk and 75% of the stuff has nothing to do with you. But you're responsible for. He said, it really has nothing to do with you, but they'll bring it to you. He said, if somebody, if the field, if something is wrong with the field right now, they'll come talk to me. He said, I don't know anything about the field, but they'll talk to me. If something goes wrong, like outside the stadium, I don't know anything about it, but they'll come to me. And so Josh McDaniels, it may not be your fault, but it probably is. It may not be your fault when Devontae Adams but, is but going he's in front of the media saying somebody, he's somebody saying, said that. Somebody said that famously. It's not, I, I'm not at fault, but I'm responsible. Oh, well, whoever said it is smart because that's what's going on with McDaniels. And I keep checking. Sure, and I'm not rooting for it. You know, I, look, Mike, you know how I feel about Josh. Known him for a long time. Love Josh. I do. I love Josh. I keep checking every 20 minutes. I'm like, has it happened yet? It's, it's going down. It's going to happen. That is, it is it's going to happen for him. It may even happen before uh, their next game because it's just it, it, it. He has set himself up in a way where he didn't manage the expectations properly for the franchise. The owner somehow getting us to the next level. And what I would have said to him is, hey, you know what, Mark? I know I can get you to the next level, but before you get to the next level, you have to take a couple steps back. I have mm. never heard of a franchise who can miss on first, second, and third round picks as consistently mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. as as your franchise did and survive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we, we're going to take some steps back, but I promise you we'll get there. May not be in year one, but year two, year three, we'll be doing some things. So uh, he's going to pay the price for some of his doing and some from the previous administration. Well, a couple of things. I mean, listen, and it may not be this simple, but what I do know is Josh McDaniel started his head coaching career 6 and 0. Since then he's 7 and 24. That's not okay. Fair. That's not fair. He's not 7 fair. and 24. You can't do that. Um no, I, they they keep records, don't they? I know I know we don't like wins and losses as a quarterback stat, but it's for damn sure a head coach stat. Okay. When, so, when, what year did he stop? What year did he stop coaching the Denver Broncos? What? What? Well, no. Uh, that, but this is why. This is why I said it may not be that simple. But that's it's a fact. Okay. That's All facts, right. as the kids say. All right. He's seven and twenty-four in his last thirty-one games as a head coach. Listen, man, this head coach thing just may not be for him. Like, why is jo why can't Josh McDaniels be Ben McAdoo? Maybe they're the same person. Maybe Josh McDaniels just a damn good offensive coordinator who was blessed to be the offensive coordinator for Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Maybe he was just in the right place at the right time. Maybe he hit the lottery. And that's what Josh McDaniels might. He just might not be a head coach. The, on the other hand, on the other hand, maybe he's not the right head coach for this franchise at this time. The blame in this situation to me falls upon the owner. The blame in this situation to me 
falls upon Mark Davis because you brought wow. Josh McDaniel in to potentially an untenable situation for anybody because you made the playoffs last year with an interim head coach who's not winning you any press conferences, who's not selling you any season tickets, who's not the winning you the offseason, and the players, players loved him. And they responded to him and they played for him. I don't know who needs to hear this. As a matter of fact, I do know who needs to hear this. David Tepper. David Tepper. If the Carolina Panthers, oh, I was just there in Carolina watching them beat the Falcons. If the Carolina Panthers keep responding to Steve Wilkes this way, look no further than Las Vegas for how you need to be mindful of wanting a sexy Sean Payton type hire when what you have in front of you is working just fine. Consider the 80 20 rule. So, Mark Davis had 80% 80 of what he wanted. He had, a, he had a playoff team. He had a coach that was getting the players to play for, for him. That they were, they had the most adverse season in recent memory last year in Las Vegas. And Rich Passaccia shepherded them through that. But you want the sexy guy. You want the guy with the Belichick tree. You want what should be forbidden fruit. Because if I'm, if I'm an owner right now, I ain't hiring, sorry, no disrespect, I ain't hiring nobody else from your Belichick tree. That's poisonous fruit. <laughs> it ain't forbidden fruit, it's poisonous fruit. Okay? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Nobody else gets serpent. a job from Bill Belichick's tree. They come to Sorry. serpent up around there. No disrespect. Don't you want that I know a lot of those guys. Don't I you like want a lot it? of those guys. <laughs> Hell no. Let somebody else do that again. <laughs> no, but, I want that out. In fairness, in fairness, Michael, maybe Josh McDaniels needs more time. Okay, I, I'll ask you this as, as a preeminent uh, expert on all things New England Patriots dynasty. Maybe, maybe Josh McDaniels is, and, 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 the, and the 99 Patriots didn't make the playoffs, but maybe Josh McDaniels is to the 2022 Raiders what Bill Belichick was to the 2000 New England Patriots, where he looked completely incompetent, where a lot of people were trying to run him out of town when he went 5 and 11, as he was trying to put his stamp on the team. And some people were resistant. I need to hear names from Devontae Adams and De Derek Carr. You want to talk about some people don't take it as seriously. Some people haven't bought in. Yeah, Name yeah. names. Yeah. And them dudes got to right. go. So Mark Davis got one or two choices. You can either eat this contract and go coach searching again, or you got to purge this roster and get Josh McDaniels his kind of players and set him up to succeed. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. And you talk about uh, the, the Patriots 99 to 2000. They did. Is that a fair step comparison? Backwards. That's a great comparison. You know why? Not now. They didn't make the playoffs in '99, but they won eight games. They had Pete Carroll, and they had Pete Carroll. Right? They won yeah. eight and eight. They were yeah. eight and eight, and then they bring in a new guy, and the new guy is five and eleven. So you go mm -hmm. down three games. I'm like, hey, well, we won eight games last year. I thought you were supposed to be some great coach. And what he couldn't say, and what he couldn't say in New England, was the same thing he couldn't say in Cleveland when he took over. Like when you take over, now. I always appreciate the guys who take over and don't want to tear up everything because mm -hmm. I wouldn't I, I, I would be like that too. I wouldn't tear up everything. You, you mean to tell me you inherited a situation that has no value. I find it hard to believe every mm -hmm. team has some pieces that even if you haven't won a championship, you better hold on to these guys because they're going to be a part. If you actually uh, make a championship, they're going to be a part of the, of the fabric. Got it. But what he couldn't say in Cleveland and what he couldn't say in New England is you gave me uh, a roster. You gave me a house with no floorboards. <laughs> Looks good on the outside, but I can't walk around here. I can't sleep in here. This place is a mess. And the reason, the reason I think uh, you uh, you were kind of unfair to Josh McDaniels, you oh. and our friend Brandon Marshall were unfair. Brandon Marshall, I don't know if you caught it. He said Josh McDaniels is incapable of leading men and getting people together and all that stuff. He was. He may have been incapable in 2010. Sure. Right. But Maybe here we are wrong. in 2022, a dozen years right. later. No, it's not I, the that's same what I said. problem. Maybe he just needs more it time. It may not be that's, the same problem. I, I, I did say that, but I did say that. I said maybe he just has to put his. That's why I brought up the 2000. Maybe he can't coach, or maybe under these circumstances, He's just not set up to succeed mm. right now. But all I know is Jim Mersey looks really, really right today to bring this full circle when he said a lot of coaches with experience, they're terrible. Or oh, so, oh, some, oh, some way he said they that. They have that fear. I mean, 
Yeah, hey. got, maybe the Raiders should go hire Charles Woodson. I don't know. Maybe they might go hire Rich Gannon because Jim Merce, they clearly got it figured out. Whereas Mark Davis hey. did not. <laughs> this is what you know. Can I tell you something real quick though? Yeah, love having you on the show, Mike. But oh, thank Jim Irsay said he loves players who don't have experience, people who don't have experience. So you think I can be the GM? You need to write him. Reach out to your boy. Listen. Reach out to him. Listen. Chris, you want to get in football? Mean, you want to be the GM? I'll, I'll be Chris Bowers' assistant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, experience is bad. That's what he said. That's what I heard him say. Experience yeah. is bad. Go ahead and get that paper. Go ahead and get that job. Hey, well, you know, I still come on the show once in a while, as I do once now. Once in a while, I doubt it. <laughs> as, I, as, as I do now. <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.